Okay everyone, I've already tried to film this video twice and made it all the way to the last book when my phone has given out. So we're gonna try this a third time. So if I talk through the books very quickly, I'm sorry, I just really wanna get this video done because we're leaving in less than two days and tomorrow's gonna be really, really busy. So wish me luck on try number three. Third time's a charm, right? channel Laura's Little Library and today I'm going to be talking about all the books that are coming out in the first half of 2022 and I am excited to read them all. Let's just get that out of the way. So I'm gonna say I'm excited to read these still but I'm gonna say the lot so just bear with me on it. But let's get right into the books. So the first book that I'm going to talk about comes out on January 4, and that is One True Loves. This is by Elise Bryant. This is a companion novel to Happily Ever Afters, also by Elise Bryant, which I have not yet read, but I am planning on picking up in January of 2022. So maybe right after I pick it up, I will be motivated to pick up One True Loves. So it follows some of the side characters from Happily Ever Afters. That's all I have to say about that one. Then also on January 4, we have a sci-fi novel called The Kindred by Alicia Dow. I believe this follows two main characters, one who is like a commoner, regular person, and one who is like down the line of being heir to the throne, and he's kind of a playboy. But they are kindred. They are either mind-linked or they are soulmates. It's, I'm not quite sure. This is why I'm going to have to read the book to find out. But when a huge threat is made on the royal family and everyone is killed all the way up till our main playboy character, they realize that there's not only a threat on him but also his kindred even though they've been separate all the way up until this point. So they get shoved on a spacecraft and blasted out to Earth. So that's quite the eventful meeting and I get the feeling they might not click upon first hectic meeting like that. So this is a sci-fi that I'm actually excited and looking forward to reading, which is kind of cool. Then jumping to the end of the month on January 25, we have a book that I've been looking forward to for quite a while, and this is Love Boat Reunion by Abigail Hing Wen. This is the sequel to Love Boat Taipei, and I rated that 4 out of 5 stars. I loved it. I believe it's following all of our same main characters, and I don't know how far after the first book this one takes place, but I just know that I'm excited to read about these characters again and see where they are after Love Boat Taipei. And by the way, Love Boat Taipei follows our main character who wanted to be a dancer, but her parents actually end up sending her on this program that is based off of a program that the author, Abigail Hingwen, actually experienced when she was younger. Um, and it basically sends them to Taipei to learn about her uh, culture and her heritage and to like teach her Mandarin and teach her other elements of culture. Like I said, I very much enjoyed it and I'm looking forward to the end of January when this comes out. Also on January 25th, we have a book called In Every Generation and this is by Kendrick Blake. I might got that name wrong, I'm so sorry. Uh, this takes place in the world of Buffy the Vampire Slayer, I believe. I actually haven't seen Buffy the Vampire Slayer, but I probably should because I want to read this book. So it follows our main character who is a witch. And her, she is very passionate about, like, the earth and the environment, and her mom promised she will teach her magic slowly and on the condition of, you know, using it for good. So the slayer of the generation dies, and it actually is discovered that our main character, the witch, is the next slayer. And she's like, wait a minute, though, I'm a witch. So she becomes the first ever witch slayer. Witch! I mean the witch slaying vampires. I am all here for it and I am excited to read it, but I also should probably watch Buffy first. <laughs> Moving on to February, on the 1st of February we have a book called The New Girl. This is by Jessie Q. Sutanto, who is the author of Dial A for Aunties. And The New Girl is actually a dark academia, one of a few that I will be talking about in this video. So we are following this main character who, uh, 
starts going to this very prestigious academy and some weird things start happening and no one is batting an eye and our main character is like um what hello guys no one's gonna question this okay so she starts to dig and she's discovering secrets secrets on like this teacher and dark things about this student the golden boy and everything um, so I believe it's going to be a very drama filled dark academia also on February 1st we have a book called this woman kingdom and this is actually Tara Maffey's next book it is a fantasy and I am thrilled to be re to be hearing about it so it takes place in a world that is based off of like an ancient Jin kingdom and we have a servant girl who secret who is secretly the heir to the throne like nobody knows it but i believe she knows it but then we also have the crown prince and he has heard of these prophecies that describe like the death of the king and so there's kind of an issue with there being a crown prince but also a true heir that is hidden from the world and so I'm excited to see how that plays out. I am very interested in this fantasy world and plot, so. Then a week later on February 8th, we have a book called Not the Witch You Wed, which, <laughs> Not the Witch You Wed, and this is by April Asher, and this follows a witch who doesn't actually have any magic. She used to date the shapeshifter but he broke her heart and she, you know, sad and very upset about it. Then years later, the, the dumb supernatural world is like, you two need to find a mate. And so they decide that her and that shapeshifter that broke her heart are going to fake date to appease the supernatural world. And it sounds like a very interesting, like, enemies to lovers, second chance fake dating. Seems like we got a lot of tropes in there, which is very intriguing, and I think it'll be a great read for Valentine's Day. And then lastly, in February, on the 22nd, we have a book called The Girl Who Fell Beneath the Sea. This is by Axie O. And oh my goodness, you guys, I am super pumped for this book. The cover alone is just beautiful. I love the color, the art style. It's one of those books that I just want to immediately buy and like, put on display on my shelf not just have on my shelf but like put on display give it its space and its room to shine and then when you know the synopsis on top of it it's going to be a beautiful book like i i know it is going to be so this book follows our main character who lives in this town in this land that is going through a lot of like storms and the sea is like flooding and it's it's terrible so what they are trying to do is that they are sacrificing a beautiful girl to the sea god every year, hoping that one year they will find the sea god's one true bride to make all the storms stop. But one year, it's someone very close to the main character, and she's like, huh, okay, no. So she decides to go under and figure out what is going on. And she actually goes into the land of the spirits, and she learns that the sea god is actually asleep so she needs to figure out how to wake him up and oh my goodness i am so excited this hits almost everything that i love so i hope to pick this up very quickly after it comes out and i definitely want to buy it it's so beautiful now we are going to move on to march and the first book to come out on the first of march is the lost dreamer and this is by liz huerta this follows mesoamerican mythology which Again, if you do not know me or my channel and you're new, first off, welcome. Hi, hello. Uh, this is me, Laura. What's up? I love mythology and I love fantasy and especially like fantasy mythology. That's my thing. Uh, so <laughs> this book alone, just based off that, has already piqued my interest. And then on top of that, we have seers and we have dreamers. So we have two main characters. One is a seer and a dreamer, and the other is like just a seer. But I believe the dreamers are like being killed off, and that's kind of an issue for our main character who is a dreamer. So they gotta stop that. And again, it's Mesoamerican mythology. So I look forward to this. I don't exactly know what all that means, 
in terms of like what it means to be a skier and what it means to be a dreamer, but I look forward to finding out when I pick up this book in March. Then a week later on March 8th, we have One for All by Lily Lanoff, and this is a historical fiction, gender bent, chronic illness own voice rep, Three Musketeers. Yeah, let's dissect that for a moment. So it's the Three Musketeers, so it's historical fiction, but it's gender bent, so we follow a female musketeer, but it also has own voices, so the author is has chronic illness, and so does our main character. There's a lot going on there that I am so ready for. I grew up fencing, and so I loved the Musketeers, but to have a gender bent, to see female Musketeers just warms my heart. It's going to just make me want to pick up fencing again, which I would love to, but it's a little difficult, but at the same time, it's like, the perfect quarantine sport because you're literally masked fully covered and you have to remain six feet away <laughs> so we have that historical fiction and i am super excited and especially because i've been wanting to pick up historical more historical fiction especially not world war ii historical fiction so there we go also on march 8 we have a book where i'm gonna butcher the title and i'm so sorry but i believe it's blood sky on I don't know. Here you go. Uh, but this is by Deborah Falaye, and this follows our main character, who is a blood scion, and she has magic powers of fire. But on her 15th birthday, she gets conscripted into the king's army, and she's very upset about this because she has to keep her powers hidden. But then she realizes, you know, she could probably take down the king within by being a part of the army from the inside which just sounds super fun it reminds me a little bit of the gilded ones but it also makes me think of a another book that i have on my tbr that i'm excited it's called that ends in fire uh so this sounds like a book that i am probably going to enjoy our badass main character with magic taking down the system classic then we are moving on to April, and on April 5, we have another Dark Academia called My Dearest Darkest, and this is by Kayla Cottingham. So this follows Finch, who is a transfer student to another prestigious academy, but right before they start attending, they almost die in this accident, but they don't. And it's kind of like, hmm, okay, interesting. Uh, but then there's this other student called Selena Sinclair, and she's like, Mmm, Finch? No, I see you. So, and then, I'm a little confused because then later on in the synopsis it says that uh, them and a couple other people end up calling this creature and making a deal where they do what the creature wants and the creature will grant them their wish. So, sounds a little... Sounds very intriguing. I'm very interested to see how the first half of the synopsis and the second half of the synopsis work together, but I've seen a lot of hype for this book. And I mean, it's coming out in April. I'll have plenty of time to pick it up for uh, the next spooky season. So, Also on April 5, we have two more books coming out. So the next one I'm going to talk about is called Love From Scratch, and this follows, uh, I think it's Enemies to Lovers. And it's the idea that there are these two people who work for like this baking show network and like a video of them goes viral and they decide to make their own show about it. It has the theme of baking and so that's all I really need in order to convince me to pick up this book. There have been so many books coming out about like baking and cooking and I think I, I think I need to do a reading vlog because I enjoy books about baking because I very much enjoy baking. I should hope I do considering I work in a bakery, but yeah, so I would love to pick it up purely for the base theme of baking. I will, I will suffer through any other plot line, but if there's baking, I'm there. And then the last book that comes out on April 5 is The Merciless Ones by Namina Forna. This is the second book in the Deathless series or the Deathless Girls, something like that. I have the first one, it's called The Gilded Ones. I rated it five stars. I loved it. So 
if you haven't already, you should pick up the Gilded ones in preparation for the Merciless ones. I will warn you, it is very gory, kind of like violence heavy, but it's, it's, we have a badass main character who fights in an army for the king. So, like, there's going to be a little bit of blood and gore. But it follows uh, this world that's very strict on this one religion that holds men to a much higher standard than women. And women have to go through this purity ritual where I think when they're like 15, they have to see what color their blood is. If it's red, they're pure, they're good to go. If it's gold, that means they're like some sort of demon. And that's a pretty bad fate for them. But our main character, who's Blood Run Gold, uh, is given an opportunity to fight in the king's army. So, there we go. Now it all connects. Now you're ready to read the Merciless ones. Just kidding. <laughs> read the Gilded ones before you read the Merciless ones. And lastly, we have the month of May. And the first book to come out in May that I'm excited for comes out May 3. And it's Book Lovers by Emily Henry. So I loved Beach Read by Emily Henry, and I very much look forward to reading People We Meet on Vacation by her. But Book Lovers follows our female main character, who is a literary agent living in the big city. Her sister convinces her to go on vacation in a small town where she meets our male main character, and he he's a, he's a book editor. And I think it's Enemies to Lovers. But all I know is that both of our main characters work in the literary world, and I'm excited for that. That is what I want. Give me more. I am here for it. I am ready for this book. So ready. Also on May 3, we have a book called Ballad and Dagger, and this is by Daniel Jose Older. This is actually a Rick Riordan Presents book, but it's also a YA. I believe it's their first YA book from that imprint, which is pretty cool. So it follows like the San Madrigal, I believe. So we have this island that was taken over by some darkness or curse in the island states. So all the people flee to the states where they have their new community. And our main character is really passionate about music and playing the piano. And there's this big name in music that he really wants to impress. However, there's, I believe, a murder and a lot of betrayal <laughs> and feelings are hurt. And they realize that the dark, mysterious thing that caused them to flee from their island may have actually followed them to their new home. And that's not going to sit well. So I'm excited to read it because it is Rick Riordan Presents and it's YA. So even though I have a lot more of the middle grade from this imprint to read, I still would love to pick up their first YA book. And then the last book that we have in May, comes out on May 10, which also happens to be my birthday, and it's called Breathe and Count Back from 10. This follows our main character who wants really badly to work at this underwater theme park type thing as a mermaid. And she's gone through a lot of surgeries on her body, and so she's, her, her recovery has been full of swimming and she loves swimming she loves being in the water but her peruvian parents are like no we do not approve so she's like you know what no this summer i'm gonna work as a mermaid i'm going to flirt with the boy next door like she's gonna take life into her own hands but i believe she discovers some secrets that may have been kept from her while she's trying to live her life this sounds like such a cute and wonderful summer read I am excited for it to come out on my birthday, obviously. Um, and yeah, it's coming out at the beginning of summer, so I want to pick it up that summer because even if it's like she's pretending to be a mermaid, it's still like good summer vibes. I would love it. I also kind of want it to be where the secret is that she actually is a mermaid. That would give me huge Emily Winsnap vibes, which I loved when I was younger. So, but we'll see. Either way, I'm excited to pick up the book. Thank you all so much. Oh my gosh, I made it through the video. How exciting. But thank you all so much for watching this. If you want me to do a part two, let me know in the comments below and I would happily do a part two for the June through the end of the year releases that are coming out. Uh, probably a little bit later in the year though when more of those releases have been announced. But otherwise, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. 
comment down below. Like I said, if there are any new releases that I didn't mention that you're looking forward to, let me know because I would love to have those on my radar and add them to my TBR. Otherwise, go ahead and subscribe and hit the bell to be notified. I am posting four videos every week during the month of December. Otherwise, I post twice a week on Sundays and Wednesdays. But other than that, like I said, thank you for watching and I look forward to seeing you all in the next video. But until then, I wish you happy reading. Thank <laughs> you.